Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, depending on where you're from. Uh, welcome to Zycel's uh, webinar this morning on Nebula Cloud Managed Networks. So it's today we're going to be covering, um, you know, especially if you're looking to become an MSP um, as a VAR uh, who would like to become an MSP, this is great information for you. Um, just again, this is beneficial to anyone who wants to learn about who Zycel is and also the, the cloud solutions that we offer um, for all of those kinds of cloud networking needs. So we're here to be our networking ally. So this webinar will be recorded and uh, you can view them online after we have it posted after. So if you have any team members who wanna join um, and uh, couldn't at this time, they can always watch it later on. Or if you want to review it yourself, um, again, you can look at that, um, those existing uh, recorded webinars. Uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A section um, and I'll try to get to them at the end of the presentation if there's time. So use those Q&A boxes to submit those qu uh, questions during the presentation. So let's move forward. Um, the fun things just to get out of the way, um, anyone who attends today's webinar will get a um, Amazon gift card as well as an entry for a thousand dollar Amazon gift card um, drawing at the uh, at the end of the different sessions that we have here. Um, I believe it's through um, through June. So sometime at the end of June, you'll have that. And all attendees will also get a copy of the managed uh, services in a month um, by Carl uh, Palachek that we'll give to you. Um, so you just have to re uh, wait for that to get to you uh, for anyone who attends this physical, um, the actual webinar itself. You can also join our partner program um, and get a Nebula demo kit um, that includes an access point, uh, PoE switches, uh, security gateways um, as a kind of a bundle for you to try out and test out Nebula. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through um, this presentation. But a little bit about who Zycel is. We've been in the network industry for over 29 years. We were established in uh, 1989. Um, we have over 1,500 employees serving 150 markets worldwide. Uh, we've powered over 700,000 businesses with our solutions out of the 100 million Zycel networking devices globally. So we've, we've made a, a, a great stride in that and continue to grow um, in, um, in our world uh, footprint. Um, we have an expertise in all different areas. We're here to unlock uh, your potential, uh, whether it be, you know, from a telco service provider standpoint with uh, those kinds of things, um, those kind of networking products uh, or business uh, level connectivity products in the connected home, we have anything that connects to a network. Uh, we also pride ourselves in our R&D capabilities with over 500 software and uh, hardware engineers uh, globally and over 150 uh, technical support people around the world to deliver all aspects of um, you know, information of the latest networking technologies, especially in switching, wireless, security gateways. And this gives us really a better flexibility and control of the different features, the functions, and fixes that our partners uh, need or feedback to us. Um, so it's really uh, great that we have that in-house. We also uh, provide a comprehensive portfolio uh, on all types of commercial products, a comprehensive range of products that work to give really an end-to-end -end solution, um, a truly one network experience. So we ch achieve this by using different types of innovation and integration, combine this with a series of different technologies, um, really to achieve you know, as an ease of use experience for both the IT um, and the end user, you know, that are maybe responsible for maintaining these networks. You know, things from security appliances like our USG and Zywall range, um, uh, you know, deploy different solutions like antivirus, um, spam filtering, intrusion detection prevention, web filtering, application control, et cetera. Uh, along with ways to, you know, make IPsec VPN tunnels using the highest levels of encryption. We also have LAN switches that have provide a wide range of supporting, um, you know, basic setup to fully manage complex network infrastructures, including layer two and layer three plus switches. On the wireless infrastructure, we have uh, standalone access points and fully manageable wireless solutions with different um, technologies from standalone to even smart antenna technologies. And then the gateways with captive portal solutions like Hotspot um, is available as well, all tied in roll into the network management um, capabilities, whether it be software integrated in a VM or in the cloud, like the solution we'll be talking about today. So what is uh, an MSP? Well, an MSP is a managed service provider and it's a company that remotely manages a customer's infrastructure, um, typically proactively uh, and under some sort of subscription model. So that's, you know, kind of the general definition of a managed service provider. And a lot of people kind of throw that around and, you know, say that I'm a managed service provider, but, you know, there are obviously benefits to, to becoming one if you are not currently. 
Um, so why become an MSP? So of course, the number one reason is recurring revenue. You, 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 MSPs typically sign contracts to provide some sort of service, a managed network service to, um, to the customers, usually three to five year kind of uh, contracts. And they can be played, paid monthly or quarterly or yearly, or depending on how the, the business flow is. Um, and so this provides a consistent you know, cash flow, recurring revenue coming through uh, to, uh, to the partner. Um, also, increased revenue. You're not just getting paid for um, just the one-time install um, in the one-time, you know, initial configuration of it, but you're actually supporting the product in those, the many features that it supports um, in uh, over a long-term period. So you're, you're um, continually receiving revenue for those kinds of services, and you don't need to wait for something to break to get paid. So you don't have to, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be a break-fix model. It can be a very proactive model where you are uh, making sure that your um, service offering, uh, which could be Wi-Fi, could be network security, et cetera, is constantly available and working. Um, you also um, help to, um, to have better relationship with your, your customers. You become a trusted advisor, not just like a one-time um, you know, low bid, you just win the project and then you leave, right? Then that way you get more referrals in the process because you're kind of an established um, you know, ongoing um, uh, company uh, working with these, uh, these end customers. So let's, like, let's take a look at some of the cloud trends and why you want to you know, be in the cloud. So the IDC expects the cloud managed wireless LAN infrastructure to achieve a 38.8 compounded annual growth rate between 2013 and 18. So we're pretty much here. And so in comparison, um, the forecast for the overall wireless LAN infrastructure market over that period is 11%. Um, the infrastructure and platform uh, cloud, uh, the clouds are expected to be 32 billion in 2017 and growing at a 35% rate, which is faster than the, the um, software, software as a service model uh, market. So by 2018, so in this year, uh, more than 60% of enterprises will have at least half of their infrastructure on cloud platforms. Um, so you really want to um, be able to, to have that. And there's obviously benefits on why that's happening in the trend there. So some of the top benefits of using a cloud, 45% uh, that were researched um, basically showed that the benefit of moving to the cloud was for security, also for increased um, efficiency, for, um, uh, for getting more data space, the flexibility that's available in the cloud, and also the scalability. Um, also physical uh, security, such as protecting physical assets at a uh, uh, geographical locations no longer like required because it's now sitting in a cloud that is, you know, already secured at a data center and also is replicated at multiple data centers in the cloud. Um, so really, again, just ensuring that everything is there uh, uh, available at any time, um, anywhere. So, the, so why, you know, cloud managed networking? Well, cloud uh, managed networking has a couple of you know real benefits there. That it, it lowers combined running costs. It, uh, it offers often with um, when you associate with setting setting up, uh, managing a platform to maintain clients. It also lowers installation costs, both time and maintenance. Um, so there's there's uh, you know benefit in there in, in terms of the cost. Um, you can work smarter and work faster. So it allows for maintenance um, of time consuming tasks that ITs are faced with on a daily basis. Things like uh, uh, setting up the device um, or maybe upgrading firmware, et cetera. Um, the cloud offers fast zero touch auto provisioning of devices. Um, also you have access anytime, anywhere. There's one platform that's unified for monitoring, configuring, updating switches, security, wireless devices, all through the web. So you can use that as, um, you know, as a multi-client configuration. So within the view, you typically can drill down um, through different customers that you have um, segmented out and drill down to the, each individual um, connected devices that are there to get information. Um, Built-in scalability and redundancy using um, Amazon AWS, we um, use our cloud managed networking software there. Um, allows for really unlimited scalability and um, different support for redundancy in that infrastructure already. Um, also for security, just making sure that from the physical standpoint and also from you know, patches, updates, et cetera, that these servers and such are all, you know, are all up to speed.
So in a traditional deployment of networks, um, the investment of man hours for um, setup, the cost for in infrastructure, uh, support of these clients are really high, even having to set up network management, um, you know, software or, or equipment, and then having to build yourself, um, you know, ability to access those equipment, typically through either a, a dedicated line or VPN access, and then creating a, a monitoring platform to do kind of the after um, installation. Um, also then having data storage for all that information, um, being able to handle updates and setting, you know, changes that adds to more, uh, you know, aspects of the, uh, the cost that, that to, to manage this kinds of, this kind of network system. And then user management or device management using authentication or uh, managing the different types of guests. So it all kind of adds up uh, in terms of the man hours to, to keep it running. And also there could be a steep learning curve to get it all up and running as well if you don't already have this infrastructure or or the monitoring system platforms in place already. But with cloud managed networks, the investment for setup and infrastructure to support these clients are much lower. So things like monitoring equipment or access to the equipment itself is a lot less. Um, it doesn't exist really. You just need typically the, you purchase the equipment, install it, um, the monitoring platform is already there within the cloud. The data storage you don't have to worry about because that's all again in the cloud. The updates and settings are all mass managed uh, through the cloud. And so you only have a few things to have to really worry about. So ease of deployment, making it quick to start, uh, to set up, um, and then scaling it as quickly as you need. So you may only need, um, you can start with just one site for right now, and, and then you can expand to 100 sites, um, you know, as you grow. And so you, you're only limited by how, how fast you can get, um, you know, people to sign up uh, for this uh, managed service. So as ISO brought um, together, um, all this kind of technologies, so the wireless, the gateways, the, um, the switches into one single platform within the cloud. So that's called Nebula. Um, Zysel Nebula is really changing the way that you do um, manage networks and handling those resources and at the same time, you know, saving costs. Um, it can effectively manage all of your customer networks, um, again, with access points, switches, and gateways. So we have all of the networking components that are, are used in businesses today, um, being able to improve not only the, from a technology standpoint, better coverage, better uh, service offering of the network, uh, but also from a IT or from the, the MSP side, um, save time and cost uh, because you're, you have active um, information from um, from these devices so you can take proactive um, action to, to mitigate any kind of network issues. Setup um, is really easy. Um, you can even set up the device without even taking it out of the box. You can register your device um, to the, the NCC, which is our Nebula uh, cloud controller, um, via the app. So we have a mobile app that you can install and all you do is enter the serial number and MAC address or you can scan the QR code that's on the box um, on select models and then it will add it to you know, the site that you wish to um, append these devices to. And then that allows for you to um, have your IT guys already have maybe even a cookie cutter site template that is copied over to this particular customer and the configurations get automatically pushed to the device once it comes online. It calls home and um, receives the, you know, the, the, the information of its configuration and its firmware upgrades. So you can get up and, uh, um, and running in just a few clicks and, and the device itself running you know, uh, in, in just a few minutes. So that really is a great benefit of, of getting this auto provisioning there. You don't necessarily need the technical expertise at the installation site itself. Um, just need somebody to have the, uh, the ability to connect things to the internet uh, account or the internet network that is currently there. Um, and as long as it can get online, um, Nebula will do the rest. And then of course you can access um, the Nebula Control Center anywhere. Um, that has an internet connection. So anywhere around the world, you have access within your fingertips on your mobile device, your tablets, or your computers, wherever you need to do um, any kind of management or uh, look at any statuses of any of your customers, or even while you're on site with the customer to show them the benefits of how you're managing um, their sites remotely. So the features of the architecture allow for it to be very scalable. There's really no limit on the throughput that you can push through um, the, um, on the cloud side of it. Um, so there's no bottleneck in terms of that management. 
Um, there's no limit in different uh, in, in number of devices you can add to the network or to your account within Nebula. You can, um, it's all plug and play. So again, it calls home when that device can be, uh, when, when it has internet access. So it can be managed anywhere. It can punch through any firewall because it's opening it from the inside out, um, making that connection to the Nebula infrastructure through a secure channel. It's also reliable. There's 99.99% .99 uptime SLA on Nebula uh, because it's offered that way through the Amazon cloud uh, side of it. So the network functions also, even if the connection to the cloud is interrupted, um, you won't be able to necessarily manage it or make changes to it while the internet is not there. But if it's already preset to have SSIDs, you know, able to get to, you know, other networking services or out to the internet, for example, it's still uh, functioning there. Um, it's safe and secure. There's no uh, user data that passes through the cloud. Um, the encryption management traffic is also standard. Um, so we use that NetConf uh, protocol to do that, to, um, to communicate with each other uh, through the cloud. And of course, the investment is protected as well. Um, we offer a free cloud management for the life of the product. So if you're not using the full scale or if your full scale um, Nebula expires, um, it will not, uh, it, it just won't be a bricked device. It will still continue to function with maybe um, some, some less um, management features uh, in the, cl uh, the free cloud um, side of it. Uh, but you can always then flip back on once you um, get the licenses to the full cloud again. So we have a full a solution um, of all the different um, types of technologies, like I mentioned before, um, in different families, the cloud-managed uh, security gateways, the cloud-managed switches, the Nebula mobile, and also the cloud-managed access points. It offers in the cloud management side an intuitive management console. Um, you can configure devices, manage the logs, traffics, uh, statistics, um, manage bandwidth consumption, the different clients that are there connected to it, uh, the application that's used. Um, so it gives you a dashboard that you can kind of see from the different sites. Each site can have a um, kind of a global picture of how the overall health of that site is and maybe what the top clients are, also what top applications those are, are there. So all without having to have physical access to that, that individual network. Um, you can get these kinds of information um, uh, at your fingertips. Additionally, some, some of the highlight features that Nebula offers, um, things like mapping um, where you do the installations to a floor plan or a map. So you can use either, you know, a Google, um, Google Maps um, type screenshot or, um, or actually have uh, pictures of a blueprint of the building itself, um, drag and drop these images into that so it can um, you know, really show you where these devices are deployed. Also with our um, topology, automatic topology enhancement that we've um, added, it will also detect um, you know, devices that are connected to each other um, and um, see where it is logically within the network. So it actually creates you a topology view. So you can click on them as well and drill into um, uh, you know, that particular device to, to configure or to look at what clients may be on it. Um, being able to schedule firmware upgrades, that's a great um, thing. And just imagine, you know, if you're only managing like one or two devices, you know, upgrading firmware is not usually a big deal. You just log into it, you download the firmware, you upgrade it to the device, right? Um, but when you're talking as a managed service provider, this starts to scale to, you know, hundreds of devices or, you know, hundreds of customers with, you know, several devices inside. So you can imagine if you wanted to stay up to, uh, up to speed with, you know, updates, to, et cetera, at a particular site, you know, it'd be very tedious to do it all one by one. Um, so we can, we actually offer, when we offer uh, new firmware releases, the administrator can do site-wide upgrades and set a time for it to do that. Um, and you can do all of them or you can do, um, um, you know, just a few of them or half of them at a time, you know, you can choose how you want to do that. Um, also role-based administration. So you can appoint different privileges for different administrators to uh, manage different um, customer networks and different guest access, et cetera. So you can set it up to have, um, you know, certain, even maybe your customer wants to have their IT to get visibility to their particular site. Um, you can set up an account for that, um, for that person uh, to gain access to their site and only see their site, even though it is under your uh, overarching tree. 
We have also done some enhancements to um, kind of mitigate um, issues where you, if you accidentally misconfigure the, the product. So the Nebula devices can actually, uh, can actually identify um, if any sort of setting that you created um, kind of disables or disconnects them from the cloud. So if it loses that connectivity because of something you've changed, um, within five minutes, it actually will flip itself back to the previous um, known good configuration um, so that you don't lose connectivity um, to the device. So if you accidentally sent a, a, you know, set up a VLAN that, that disabled the management uh, capabilities or the internet access uh, of the device to the, to the cloud server, um, it will change itself back so that the VLAN is no longer uh, in play so that you still have um, access to it again. Um, there's also configuration changing alerts. So you can set up, the administrator can get different alerts if uh, an owner or if um, some IT guy that you've given access to makes some sort of changes within um, the, um, the control center. You can also manage guest networks through this uh, cloud portal. Multiple options for captive portal, um, including Facebook login, um, self-created accounts, et cetera. And th these don't require any sort of VLAN. These will be layer two isolated automatically um, within the system, within that cloud site. So you can set an overall site as a, um, you know, with a certain prior uh, profile. Um, but you can imagine, let's say you're managing maybe a chain of stores that have all similar um, you know, logins and authentication requirements, you can apply the same guest network, um, you know, profiles across through all of their sites, um, all of their, um, their locations at the same time. Um, it's easily customizable as well. The, there's editor for the, for the captive portal, um, or you can download the HTML or CSS file and then re-upload or, or you can host it yourself. So you can choose whether to host it within the current cloud system, or if you want to be even, you know, maybe more fancy and, and having it look, uh, the look and feel to, to match the corporate look and feel of what you're trying to do, um, you can host it within your servers and have it redirected there. I'd mentioned the mobile application before. Um, this allows again for you to add, you know, very quickly, you know, hundreds of devices with the QR code scanner. So you can just scan the codes, pick the sites. You know, after you've scanned all the codes, you can choose which sites the um, the APs go into. You can also record um, and take a picture of um, where you mounted the device. So you can take a photo of that. You can then um, import it into you know, your, your Nebula site, and it will show up in the, um, within the, the device GUI, uh, sort of the device configuration side. So in case the, the installer has to go out there and do a break fix, he can always, you know, see where maybe it's physically located. Um, you can view different sites at a glance, so you can kind of get that overview, um, the same kind of overview as your dashboard through the app. Um, of course, we're adding all sorts of other features there. Um, maybe um, in the future, you'll see some sort of level of management that will come up, um, come as well. Um, but it can quickly at least identify if there's something that's on devices that are maybe offline or something like that. And it gives some more detailed information of the devices um, uh, within, within that particular site. So the QR code scanner, um, this is how it works. You create a site on the Nebula uh, Cloud Control. Um, side and, and you launch the app, you can add the device using the QR code that's on the bottom of your devices or again on the boxes that are there. So you can scan that, that, that 2D QR code there um, and you can register it to the devices on the cloud. And this is just an, an example of how that photo capturing would work. You take a photo of that device within that GUI, um, it's automatically uploaded to the, the NCC um, and now you can check, you know, from a visual standpoint uh, where that device is physically located. And then of course we're here to, um, within our wireless um, access points and technologies that we deploy within Nebula. Um, we offer a, a, a very comprehensive, um, a great user experience for Wi-Fi because of features like dynamic channel selection, load balancing, and smart uh, client steering. So it allows for the connections to be more stable, um, the overall QoS or the experience of the user to be better, especially mobile devices. Um, I think you'll probably encounter this where, you know, you may have an iPhone or let's say um, an Apple device that that is really good at hanging on to um, access point MAC addresses, even when their signal strength is very low. Um, even if they are sitting underneath, you know, another access point of the same as exact SSID, um, it hangs on to the old MAC address. 
um, with client steering, load balancing, and smart client steering, et cetera. It allows for us to set up um, thresholds to kick the, the device from the old access point and forcing them to, to kind of reassociate to something in Rome to something that is, is near to them. Um, so again, it allows for you to, to, to do all that within the Nebula system all under that same uh, management platform. And Nebula plays nice. It works with what you already have, meaning that it uses and we offer SNMP outputs or syslog outputs that you can import into a monitoring um, software that you may already use. So you can still continue to use that, to, and, but Nebula can be the, the management platform. But if you're not tied into any kind of particular um, uh, you know, uh, RMM or anything like that, Nebula is a great tool for you to start with or to use, you know, as your main uh, management console uh, because it offers you everything that you would need to set up uh, and get started with this kind of managed service um, offering. It doesn't require you to replace anything. Um, so it exists really well with any kind of existing hardware and gateways that you have. Maybe for now you're, you're looking at, um, you know, just deploying access points in an existing uh, switch and gateway infrastructure that might be already there. Um, being able to take advantage of, of those kinds of client steering technologies, smart antenna technologies, um, but managing all from a single, um, you know, location or single interface. Um, you can just start there with the wireless and, and uh, later on can can switch over the switches and gateways if you if you so choose but if you don't there's no not a problem um, it's not an all or nothing option so you can uh, use nebula in any kind of solution and setting up nebula is really easy um, we say it's you know one two three but it's actually it can be within any order so just imagine you know an example could be that I could actually configure um, the device on the cloud uh, before the box is even installed or even opened from the box you can basically set up templates um, for the different sites so if you come up with a best practice cookie cutter you know for let's say a doctor's office uh, for an access point a gateway a switch um, that can already be a, a cookie cutter template so when you have an install coming out, you can set up that new site, uh, do a, um, a clone copy of um, those configurations for those devices onto this new site. Um, you can log in and register the device either uh, manually or through the app. And then you can ship it out um, and then plug the device in. So, you know, in that, in that particular order, I'm going three, two, one, you know, as an install. Um, and so it just then requires you to just plug the device in at the end, as long as it has internet access all those configurations and such that you've done at, at, at step three um, will all be ready to go in just a few minutes. So talking a little bit about the, the wireless technologies that we have, we have a multiple uh, different types of technologies, uh, hybrid access points and also a Nebula, Nebula Flex. So we'll talk about, a little bit about that. Um, but one, one main thing, what, you know, why Zycel is different. Um, we've taken great pride in how we've designed um, our access points to, to allow for the user experience to be as best as possible. So we've refined, tuned, and made a very robust hardware in creating um, the Wi-Fi experience to be as best as possible. And all of our Nebula access points are backed by a lifetime warranty. So you can see here in just kind of this blown up design, um, this layers of, of, of um, shielding that you see. So even from the housing, you see that first layer there um, is the antenna array that is sitting on top of a metal, metal base plate. Um, you can see the, um, the antennas here with that so that provides protection from the antennas from the actual PCB board itself, which is actually the, the number one cause of interference. But on top of that, you can see the components that are inside the radios, et cetera, are sitting within um, you know, shielded grooves. So this plate then covers, these uh, square plates then cover on top of that. Um, and then also the backing itself is also shielded um, to prevent co-channel interference. So any kind of radiation that might be going out the back of the device um, is not causing more interference to other devices because you know that uh, in typical deployments, you're not going to just deploy one access point. It's going to typically be multiple. So the overall um, experience, the overall um, um, coverage, uh, performance uh, benefits uh, are, are, are seen uh, when this hardware is being used, especially when the competitors have just a straight PCB board, no other shielding. The antennas are right on top of the PCB as well because they're just, you know, 
trying to do low cost, um, trying to just maximize, you know, that, that aspect of it, um, but not really taking into consideration the code channel interference um, and coverage issues or performance issues. So Nebula um, APs, these are the, the arrays that we have in our portfolio. We have ones with the advanced antenna that's our NAP 102. Um, it's, it's a kind of a smoke detector kind of form factor. It uses reflectors to optimize the pattern for better coverage. Um, we have our dual optimized antenna uh, access points and those deliver um, you know, really uh, good performance on um, both options of ceiling mount or wall mount uh, with dual patterns that are there. So whether you're um, wall mounting or ceiling mounting, you can change the, um, the way that the, the antenna array uh, signal is, is being pushed. Um, and then of course our flagship, and this is where, you know, kind of if you need high density, um, kind of best in class uh, wireless performance, as well as um, high density, you know, uh, 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 interference mitigation, the smart antenna is your, your best option um, just because of the way that it uses those optimized antenna patterns to um, not only um, give better coverage, uh, but better signal strength to the client while mitigating any kind of interference that might be around that client. Uh, and then our outdoor access point, our IP66 water dust proof enclosed um, with heating, uh, with heat, um, with a built-in heater as well for, for bigger, uh, wider temperature range work uh, to, to, for it to work. On the switching side, we have dedicated cloud managed switches, a uh, full family as well, layer two access switches, um, eight through 24 port uh, POE and non POE, high budget POE as well, using our smart, uh, intelligent uh, POE uh, modes, uh, allows for then you for you to um, deploy more access points, more cameras, more IP phones um, than the competition because of how we uh, better maximize that power budget uh, on its actual device consumptions. Um, we support uh, 10 gig uplinks uh, on some of our models with PoE. We have ACL, VLAN configuration, QoS, DHCP server guard or IGMP snooping functions via VoIP um, and video applications, radius, Mac forwarding, et cetera. So everything you would, you would need in kind of a layer two type switch, um, these are all available for um, within managed in the cloud. So it allows for you to do very easily and quick provisioning. You have that real-time monitoring and also port control. And this is very helpful. You can um, uh, you know, activate or um, schedule PoE uh, ports to be turned on or off, et cetera. And you can then configure multiple ports across switches of the same site. So you can basically um, check off you know, what switches you want to um, make a change to within that site. You can then make those um, updates within those ports. Um, and then apply them. So it makes it really easy for you to make changes maybe for VLANs, et cetera. On the security side, our NSG gateways are you know, a great fit for, um, for, for small businesses, a network that are out there. Um, really zero touch site to site VPN. It's a great um, uh, feature to have easy to create IPsec tunnels between different sites just by, um, by choosing which one is the hub and spoke. Um, and I'll show you a, a shot of that later. Um, being able to use a next generation firewall, the IDP um, and application control, uh, being able to block those kinds of uh, threats, malware. Um, we also are enhancing it. By end of this month, we will have the, um, the content filtering, the, um, the antivirus functionality within the uh, within the device as well. Um, we can do, uh, you know, identity-based security policies. So we can identify users in there and also different applications that have different security policies. So you can control, you know, Facebook app uh, access or even time of day of Facebook access. You can do that as well. Um, robust VPN, um, LCTP over IP set connectivity to connect site to site or maybe remote device to site. Of course, it has built-in DHCP, NAT, QoS, VLAN management, so it's all VLAN aware uh, of any kind of VLANs you may have within that um, this cloud network. Do static routes, dynamic DNS support, et cetera. So we have a, a range of three models currently, and it's, it's, it's continuing to expand as well, um, depending on the throughput that you're looking for. 
So on the site to site VPN, you can just establish these by just choosing again, like a topology um, hub and spoke, um, and it will automatically peer to each other and create those VPN tunnels for you. Um, so then that's, how, that's all you choose here, hub and spoke. Um, you can configure all the, uh, the firewall functionalities, the application control, and you can add it with a schedule. Um, so you can do layer seven um, applications. You can say add the applications. You can say, hey, fa Facebook access. And then you can choose you know, the action of that and you can log all that information. Nebula, the architecture, the cloud architecture also complies with all these different compliances um, around the world. Um, so it's it's very flexible depending on no matter where you're deploying it uh, meeting these certifications so just i wanted to cover a quick um, note about the licensing that's involved with with nebula um, because that's something that you'll need to know it's different than a standalone kind of device where you just kind of pay one time um, nebula offers it as a managed service kind of subscription so that subscription can then become um, you know the platform of which you use to manage your customers um, so on a subscription model so we offer two types of subscriptions one is the license free um, I want maybe that's something for you that you just want something simple, easy to set up, just to rely on. It's more of like a, a single site management or maybe an end user who doesn't necessarily need to manage, you know, multiple sites or very complex networks. Um, or there's the professional pack and that's for if you need, you know, ease of deployment with the auto provisioning, you uh, need the management uh, that you need to continually, you know, manage and actively manage or uh, get information from. Um, how to, you know, information on how to improve your client network, you know, just to see where the clients are connected, maybe issues with what devices are there uh, to make proactive um, um, action to managing those networks. So you can see the Nebula free, which is what we offer to any of the devices that are Nebula supported, um, you know, pretty much have very similar features. The, the biggest ones, uh, the biggest difference between the free and the professional is that the free only has seven days of um, rolling kind of monitoring um, device and client monitoring and logs, whereas the, the professional pack um, is for a full year of that data, um, a, a constant rolling of that year. Um, the professional pack also comes in two different options. You can have an annual uh, or multi-year kind of license to pay for for the Nebula or a perpetual, meaning that it can be a unlimited license. You can just one time uh, pay for it and it will, um, you know, be available for that device for the rest of that, you know, uh, lifetime. Um, each one of the devices, so pretty much each node um, needs a Nebula um, uh, license to, to become uh, license managed, uh, Nebula managed in the cloud unless you're doing the free one, of course. Um, but for all these other features um, that you see here, um, those all, each device needs that, that, that pack. Now they come with, all the devices come out of the gate one year, um, you know, everything that needs to be functioning for one year. So it's a pro pack. So all the NAPs, NSWs, and NSGs all have one year of the controller pack. Um, and then the gateways also include the one year of the UTM services, so the security services um, as well. So it's all you need, you know, at least for their first year. Um, there are some devices out there that are, that are the no pack licenses, meaning uh, no pro pack that's included, like the NWA um, 1300 series and the GS 1930 series that's coming out. Um, these ones are what we call Nebula Flex, meaning that they can function as a standalone device as you're just normally used to, but has the option uh, in, in, within the GUI to be able to be converted uh, to a Nebula firmware that allows for it to then be controlled by Nebula uh, through the Nebula platform. So it, it allows for you to you know, standardize on a particular hardware series if you wish, that gives you the flexibility um, to become um, Nebula, or you can use the same hardware. Certain customers may only want a one-time kind of standalone, which you can offer that, um, and other ones may want the cloud. So you could still use the same exact hardware, um, change to the cloud firmware, and be able to use it for that cloud customer. 
So one other thing that comes into play when you're dealing with these kinds of licenses or multiple device licenses is uh, what we call co-termination. So let's say to understand click licensing in Nebula, let's say for example, you purchase 10 access points, right? And out of the gate, each access point comes with a one year license. So you activated all those 10 APs within that site. Um, and so you have 12 months of service, right? Now after six months, let's say you needed to purchase 20 additional access points. So then those access points come with one year licenses each. So now you actually have a situation where, um, you know, half of the APs are expiring technically in six months. The other 20 are expiring in, in a year from now. So now you have two different expiration dates for that. So it adds to the complexity if you want to handle, you know, and manage these kinds of clients. So what Nebula actually does, is that it automatically adjusts, it kind of basically averages or spreads out all of those, um, you know, the, the time expiration dates uh, weighted across all of the devices within that site. Um, so they say the same, it's still the same customer, um, but then it offers a single termination license. So those 10 access points that had expired at six months and the 20 that were at a year, they all average out and they become 10 months of services um, left on the whole system. So that's where that single license co-termination works. Um, so again, you can then manage how many, you know, when it actually expires, if you're adding or taking away devices. In the license management view of Nebula, there's areas where you can find out, you know, where the license status is. Like for example, here, it'll show you, hey, you have um, 259 points. Um, and that equiv uh, is equivalent to, to 326 days within this, um, within this site management. Um, the underlying, just so you know, the underlying um, system is kind of based on a point system. So it tells you how many, uh, each device has, can have different points that, um, uh, of its consumption. So there's like a consumption point. Um, the reason why it has an underlying point is just imagine if you had a site that had, let's say, you know, 100, access points or you know or let's say 50 access points you don't want to have to deal with a situation where in a year you have to buy somehow 50 one-year licenses or 50 licenses to then kind of apply 15 license codes into the system for that site right that would just be a nightmare for you to do but instead we then offer the ability for you just to buy points so you can buy let's say 500 points and that let's say is equivalent to one year you just apply that one license that's 500 points and it will now extend your license out um, to the appropriate time frame. And then the other thing too is that it also allows for you to do change its termination time. So for example, the expiration date on this system is, <clears throat> is 825. Um, let's say you wanted it because of your billing cycle or your contract with that customer. Um, you want the expiration date to be the end of the year. You can use the calculator to, um, to estimate for you how many points your site would need uh, in order for it to terminate on you know, December 31st. So and then it can tell you that and you can then purchase that exact amount and um, get that termination date to, to match up to that. So let's take, take a look at Nebula versus some of the other competitors that are out there. <clears throat> so Nebula um, offers something that's, it's, you know, it's hard, harder to find. It's more on the lines of Cisco Meraki where it offers the EP, the switch, and the gateway all in one solution. That's plug and play, gives you the ability to do code termination. And one of the only players out there that actually offers you a lifetime license option. So if you have a customer that says, you know what, <clears throat> I have a three-year contract with, with you as a service, um, but for you as a managed service, it's, it's more cost effective to just go, you know what, I'm going to buy a lifetime license for, um, for these uh, devices. Those can, you know, <coughs> no, excuse me, uh, be used um, and um, you don't have to worry about the, the upgraded license every time, um, every year. So you can just manage that um, for the rest of that product's lifetime. I mean, in fact, actually the, the lifetime license ends up becoming part of that, um, that site organization. Um, so even if the hardware is changed out later on in the future, um, the site still will have a lifetime um, uh, activation or lifetime uh, cloud control function on it. Um, for those APs that are in it. But just remember that you cannot mix and match um, within a particular organization site, um, both 
uh, lifetime devices or non-lifetime. They have to all, within that site, they have to all be lifetime licensed if you choose that route. So even if you add new devices onto it, um, that particular site, it would have to be a lifetime license if you want it to be managed under that same um, site organization. Um, otherwise, you'd have to create a whole new site just to have that one, even if you physically installed it in the same exact location. Um, also within the, again, the professional pack that we offer, um, Again, Cisco Meraki is kind of the only one that is, you know, matching up to us. But of course, if you go ahead and take a look at any of those prices um, from the hardware standpoint, from the licensing standpoint, um, you'll, you'll come to quick realize that it's not scaled to, um, you know, the small business sector like we have our product. Um, so take a look at that. We offer the one year of logs, the retention data, um, also summary reports, GUI um, data retention information as well, matching up with um, what Cisco has. So as a partner, um, you know, if you're not already a partner or if you are a partner, um, you know, uh, we look forward to working with you. There's a bunch of benefits that, that you can have uh, when you become a partner. Um, things like bid support, priority support with our, um, our, our sales engineers and technicians. Um, we have a regional presence here in the U.S. from the support standpoint and sales in the U.S. office in Anaheim, California. Um, our, we have deployment guides that, that you have access to to help you with the learning curve of any of the products. Um, you have lifetime warranty on our business class hardware, including all of the Nebula systems. Um, access to all the free webinars, advanced replacement, um, and also um, one network uh, utility capability functions um, to help you to deploy um, any devices that are non-cloud. But of course, if you're choosing the Nebula cloud side, um, it's all integrated into that cloud system. So um, there's nothing else you, you need. Maybe the only thing you need is that mobile app uh, if you want to use, um, use those installs. Um, the Zycel Authorized Partner Program, that again, gives you access to this um, distribution discounts. Um, so I advise for you to join the partner program today and we'll, uh, we'll get you immediately to the silver tier uh, partner status. And, on, and in addition, you receive that book from Kara Palachek, the managed service in a month um, information. It's a, it's a great tool uh, for you to read um, and find out more information on what managed service providers are doing out there from, from even the, from the billing, from how much to charge, uh, how much to consider and that uh, on top of, uh, you know, the kind of the hardware managed solutions as well. And actually Carl will be having, uh, will be joining us for a webinar um, next, next month um, sometime. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, he'll be putting on a webinar with us um, on talking about uh, more about his book and also as a managed service uh, provider, what, you know, things to, things to, to note. Um, these are some of the benefits within that. Again, if you sign up with us, um, you become a silver partner, which gives you 18% um, discount at uh, distribution. Um, so I always tell our customers, you know, there is, there is uh, opportunity for you to make money on the hardware itself on top of, you know, selling this Nebula solution, which then gives you the revenue, uh, recurring revenue, the monthly revenue on that platform. So um, if you're able to maintain, um, you know, just within the silver category, uh, within half a year of 6K or $6,000 of, of product, which is pretty much, you know, maybe a, pro a project or two, like one of these installs, um, you would stay qualified with the silver. But um, if you could push yourself to be 12K, which is, again, not, not very, um, very much in a six month period, that's only 2K a month. Um, that gives you up to a 20% discount at distribution. Um, so you'll be able to price and, um, you know, gain access to um, different discounts, lead referrals. Again, the systems engineer access when you want to call uh, myself or our systems engineer to help you with um, thinking through with your customer uh, what kind of um, uh, models you need for the deployment. Um, you know, I, I advise for you to get to that, that gold tier. It will help uh, greatly. Um, leasing financing, we also offer now, we've partnered with LEAF um, Commercial Capital to give you that option if you're looking for financial um, uh, financing options. Um, so we can do that, um, especially if you're, you know, starting up and not, and not wanting to invest, you know, 
a huge amount into uh, capital investment of the hardware. Um, we can roll it out again. It's just more beneficial in a managed service kind of offering for you to do that. If the customer does not want to um, necessarily pay for the hardware upfront, um, you can roll it into a, a monthly, you know, hardware cost and, and service cost in one bill. Uh, and at the same time, you're not having to front um, the whole, the upfront as well. You can pay a monthly um, for the hardware on, uh, through Leaf. So if you want to become a partner, uh, please go to um, zycel.com, click on the partner link at the top, um, and click on the channel uh, partner program, and click to become a partner. Just fill out your information there, um, and uh, you, you can get the application rolling um, on that. Again, there's no cost to become a, a partner. It's just that if you have, uh, you just have to maintain certain sales level to, to, be, uh, to stay within those tiers of discount. Um, if you want to find out more about Nebula, um, you can go to nebula.zysel.com. Um, there's a do, uh, demo there where you can click on that live demo link before you, um, before you put in the account and password information. Because uh, if you click on the login side, that's going to the real, um, the real Nebula um, login. Um, so I advise for you to create an account there either within the main, the real Nebula or uh, get a 60-day demo kit after you join our partner program, you can talk to our sales rep and ask for that. Um, and it includes a Nebula AP, the switch and gateway. So you can get kind of that full feel of, um, of the deployment. What you can do is you can, um, you know, set it up, see how it provisions. You can deregister, uh, deregister it um, and then, you know, reset it, do it again, you know, and, and see how, how easy it is um, to, to get that feel of, a, of, a, of an installation. We have partners who then go and set up um, once they've created a cookie cutter for a particular site, um, they'll go ahead and um, create a template, which then they just use to, um, to clone over. Uh, so their deployments after the initial setup is very easy and quick. So, well, that concludes um, my webinar at this time. Um, if there are any questions, uh, again, please use the Q&A section um, and um, send me any of those questions you may have. I'll try to answer those. Um, if not, if you're just wanting to drop off now, um, again, thank you for um, considering Zycel and Zycel Nebula Cloud Networks. I uh, hope to um, hear from you uh, or, or see you um, soon uh, in terms of um, any kind of questions or calls you may have after uh, the webinar. Please feel free to reach out to your sales rep um, and they can get a hold of myself or uh, one of the uh, systems engineer technicians to answer your questions. All right, it looks like we don't have any questions at this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and conclude the, um, the Nebula uh, webinar here. Again, hope to see you at another webinar soon. Um, we have another partner, if you're a new partner, we have a partner webinar that's coming up at the beginning of June um, and where we go over a um, kind of a high level uh, product overview of all, all the offerings that we have at Zycel uh, from a business standpoint. So um, take a look at that. Uh, watch out for that and, and sign up for it. Um, again, thank you. Thank you for choosing Zycel as, as your networking ally.